Hi there, are you feeling frustrated at how long it's taking you to finish your music track? Well, I've got you covered with these five really quick and effective techniques. My name's Andrew and I've written uh, well over 500 music production library tracks now. Uh, I tend to write a couple of tracks each week, so I am reasonably quick, uh, or at least I have a workflow that works, and hopefully I can pass that on to you in this video. So the first thing that I find really, really helpful is to switch off your inner critic. Um, I think we have two parts of our brain. We have our creative part and we have our, our music critic part. The bit that's always saying, that's not good. You can do better than that. And making you deleted to try things and perfect stuff. Um, to a certain extent, speed composing is about um, just going with the flow and uh, letting the ideas, no matter what quality they are, fl flow out of you, getting them down, trying different things, trying different alternatives, having fun. As soon as you allow that inner critic to come into your mind and start um, trying to work out what's good and what's not, it slows you down and the creative flow goes. Now, the ongoing secret from that is that at a different time, you sit down and you listen to what you've, you've composed and you work out what works and what doesn't, make notes, and then go back to another creative session and do the creative stuff. So separating out the creative mind and the, the critical, um, the thinking analytic mind is really, really helpful to speed composing. The other thing that I find really helpful is um, this thing about the fact that the work will always fill the amount of time that you have available. Um, I work in short 50-minute um, timed sessions. I have a timer, a timer, um, and I have in my mind either a written list or at least a mental list of what I'm going to do in each 50 minutes to keep focused. I don't have my phone on. I don't have my emails on. I literally, I, I sit, I do not move for 50 minutes. I don't even go for a wee unless I'm really desperate. Um, so, and then, you, and then you have time off. I have 10 minutes off, 10 to 15 minutes off and do whatever I need to do and then come back and do another 50 minutes. Um, that focus, I think, is really, really important. There's nothing worse than also having, say, four hours and thinking, okay, well, I'm going to write a piece of music uh, and having four hours spanning out in front of you where, where it's unstructured and you can fiddle with emails and be distracted by downloading a new sample library or watching a YouTube video. Structure, structure, structure of your creative time I find personally works really, really well. The next thing I think is to um, limit the amount of tools that you're using and to set some parameters. Um, I think writing a piece of music with a blank DAW session um, and not really having any idea what you're going to do is it's like having a blank sheet of paper in front of you it's really difficult personally I find using reference tracks really helpful um, I need to know what sort of style I'm writing and I need to know what length I'm aiming for preferably some instrumentation ideas um, some structural ideas and those that I've got from some I'll have got from some previous listening away from my my workstation so preparation I think is the key in terms of working out some parameters about what your track's going to sound like. Um, that sort of leads into, I suppose, the obvious advice, which is to set up a template. Now, I, do, I don't personally have a, a template because I find it too unwieldy, um, but having a template, a little mini template for each type of project can be really, really helpful, or a sort of starter template where maybe you might just have all your strings set out and you're going to add other instruments to it can be useful. Or if you're writing a whole album, then having a template of sort of sounds that you're going to use a lot can be really helpful. I think probably more useful, what I use more is I have a basically an empty template um, with different blank folders of, of instruments or what will become stems routed through to my, my stereo out. Um, so all my routing and my uh, stuff like that is done and I can just put in instruments as I go. I find that a real massive time saver. Anything that you can do to get away from um, breaking that creative flow in step one, I'm talking about uh, not letting the inner critic break the creative flow. Also try to avoid any any technicalities breaking your creative flow. So, you know, getting bogged down in routing and reverb sends and stuff like that is a, is a total creation killer. Um, try to get that done in your template, first of all, before a separate from your creative session and allow your creative session just to flow as naturally as possible. The next thing is to um, try and get into a creative routine. I'm really lucky in that I can, I do this full time, so I can choose when I compose and when I don't compose. Um, if you're working or you have another job or other commitments, that can be much, much harder. So I'm aware it's a real luxury, but if possible, get into a routine. I personally compose first thing in the morning, so I do. I compose pretty solidly all morning. Um, I'm a morning person, but, and I find that my brain is just sort of conditioned to compose at that time. 
So uh, on a Sunday or a weekend, if I'm not composing if I'm on holiday, I find I sort of go into music mode after breakfast, which is quite nice, uh, even if I'm not composing, um, because I've sort of conditioned my brain to do that. If you, there's nothing worse for speed of composing than sort of composing when you feel like it. Um, I think you have to just get into a routine. You have to just sit down. You have to just do it and not you know, sort the consequences really, uh, just just sort of get on with it. Um, I think if you wait to be inspired or if you wait till you feel like composing or you do it at different times all over the place, then mentally you're not going to be in the right headspace to make progress. So I think having a regular routine as much as possible is really, really valuable. Finally, I find it really helpful to have several tracks going on at the same time. So if I get bored or stuck with one track, even if I've been working out for five or 10 minutes, I can um, I can move on to another track. So I have, uh, I use Trello and I have like a list of work that's in different stages as I'm, as I'm, um, as, as they, as they progress. Um, I tend to find that my most creative and quick working happens within the first 20 to 30 minutes of working on a track. And after that, uh, I can work on it 50 minutes very often, but often, often it's a sort of diminishing returns. So if you work, work on a track, keep moving forward. If you find that you're getting a little bit stuck or you feel that you're not moving forward or you're slowing down, then my advice is just to actually to, to switch it off, leave it, set it aside and work on, boot up something else and work on something else. Come back, then come back to that track with fresh ears the, the next day. I think having the fresh ears is a really good idea. I, I genuinely find that I, 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 I can start a track and then get a bit stuck and think okay well that's not going anywhere but then look at it the next day and just know exactly what's going to happen to it um so that idea of having fresh sort of fresh ears and a fresh thought process behind it is really really important so i'm hoping you got some really useful tips from that uh if you like this video subscribe below and uh you might be wondering well what happens if i get this wrong are the things that are slowing me up that i don't actually really know that i'm doing i'll link to a video up here um have a look at that it's about things that you mistakes you might be making that you don't actually realize that are slowing you down thanks for watching see you again soon